poor shadow. Be warning of, or to indicate or suggest something, usually something unpleasant, is going to happen. If you've been paying attention at all, you know that not only was 9-11 another false flag attack perpetrated by the powers that shouldn't be, but it was also foreshadowed before it happened a ridiculous number of times in every form of media imaginable. A favorite place for the cabal to do their foreshadowing is in popular cartoons like Family Guy and The Simpsons. And of all the obvious 9-11 references in the 1997 Simpsons episode, City of New York vs. Homer Simpson, one scene actually gives us a big clue to something else they've done. Something that might be one of the biggest jokes they've played on us yet. Making us carry around pictures of 9-11's horrors in our wallet on their fiat paper currency. In one particular scene of this Simpsons episode, the family is discussing going to Manhattan. Lisa holds up a bus schedule that clearly shows 9 and 11, the 11 represented by the Twin Towers on the front cover. This paired with talk of going to New York where 9-11 happened is already rather brazen, but then Bart holds up a bunch of money in front of the numbers 9 and 11. The price of the bus trip or the reason unemployed 10-year-old Bart has this cash does not come up at any other point in the episode. It's simply a clue within a clue, 9-11 and money. So let's take a close look at our money. When this episode aired, the Rockefeller's Federal Reserve had just released a new series of bills with changes made to all of the buildings on the backs of the 5 to the 100. No significant changes had been made to the backs of the bills since the 1928 series. On the new 1996 series of bills, all of the same buildings appeared on the same denominations, but each one was either moved a bit or a completely different side of the same building was now shown. The Lincoln Memorial has always appeared on the modern $5 bill, but on the new 5, the building was widened and lowered down a bit. On the new 10, the Treasury Building has gone from an angle view to a dead-on frontal view. The new 20 has gone from showing the famous view of the south side of the White House with the round portico to the completely opposite north side. There are actually two new 50s. The old bill from 1928 showed the east side of the Capitol Building, but as of the 96 series, the west side now appears. The 96 series shows a blank sky behind the building, but as of the 2004 series, big white clouds appear behind the west side view. They barely touched Independence Hall on the back of the $100 bill, except to move it up just slightly. To see these pictures for yourself, you'll need a current 5, 10, 20, and $100 bill. You'll also need two $50 bills, one without the clouds from somewhere between 1996 and 2004, and the new 2004 series bill with the clouds. Both are still in circulation as of 2013. Place each bill face up, fold the bottom up, find the center point, and bring both ends up like so. Folded this way, the old bills show nothing of note. But the new bills show these six scenes, each one framed by an arch. The arch shape framing each scene was added to every bill that didn't already have it as of the 1996 series. It represents the Washington Square Arch, which is about two miles north and to the east of where the towers once stood. More about that arch in a moment. These six folded bills, all but one of them released five years before 9-11, depict the scenes that took place before, during, and after that horrible day. The $5 bill shows what looks like two towers, but they're shorter than the towers on the 10 and the 20. This is because in this scene, they're still being built. David Rockefeller spearheaded the project to build the towers in the late 1960s. Together with his brother Nelson, New York governor at the time, they made deals, flexed political muscle, and soon the Port Authority of New York initiated eminent domain proceedings against the outraged residents and businesses in Lower Manhattan that stood where the Rockefellers wanted the towers built. Over 300 businesses were displaced and destroyed to make way for the towers. Here's David Rockefeller in 1967 on the cover of Newsweek, less than one year after the groundbreaking for the WTC began. The hands on his watch, which is prominently displayed, are set at 9 and 11. The folded $5 bill shows the Twin Towers in the midst of their construction. You can even see something that looks like the kangaroo cranes used to build the towers on the top. The folded $5 bill is scene 1, towers being built. The $10 bill shows the tower on the right, which, through the arch, would be the North Tower, with what looks like fire and smoke close to the top. 
The North Tower was the first one that was hit on 9-11 between the 93rd and 98th floors of the 110 floor building at 8.46 a.m. Note that the artist decided for some reason to make a few leaves going in a different direction than the rest right here, exactly where the iconic first plane hole on the north side of the North Tower would appear on 9-11-2001. The folded $10 bill is seen too, North Tower hit. The $20 bill shows the tower on the left now with the fire and smoke, much lower than the one on the right. This is because the South Tower would be hit next, about 20 floors lower than the North at 9.03 a.m. A close-up of the top areas of the 20 shows clustered groups of oval shapes supposedly representing leaves, but none of these leaves are found in the close-up of any of the other bills. Many of these oval shapes seem to be arranged one on top of the other. Could we be looking at something else they knew would happen on 9-11? Are these representative of their victims, clamoring for air in the final moments of their lives, piled on top of each other in the extremely narrow windows of the towers? The folded $20 bill is scene three, South Tower hit. The 1996 $50 bill and the 2004 $50 bill show the next two scenes, but they're out of order. I guess even arrogant, psychotic Satanists have to be a little bit subtle. The 2004 $50 bill, folded, is an obvious depiction of the towers being demolished. Scene 4. The 1996 $50 bill shows scene 5, nothing through the arch, which is how the view looked from after the destruction of the Twin Towers on September 11, 2001, until the next scene was made reality around 2009. In 2007, despite a great deal of opposition from local politicians and the artists and residents who use Washington Square Park, the City of New York Parks Department and Rockefeller cohort Mayor Michael Bloomberg pushed through a park renovation project spending tens of millions of dollars to, among other things, move the Washington Square Park's fountain from the place where it had been located in the center of the park for 138 years. The new spot for the fountain? 22 feet east so that it now sits almost in line with the opening in the archway. This is the view through the arch today. The folded hundred dollar bill is the sixth scene, the water fountain. There's a biblical connotation to the entire 9-11 ritual that explains why this water fountain would be the final step. The Twin Towers and Building 7 represented Solomon's Temple. The view of the fountain through the arch today signifies the water siphoned to the temple to wash away the massive amounts of blood from the sacrifices that took place there. Here are two pieces of King Solomon's actual aqueduct on display at the Rockefeller Museum in Jerusalem. This water fountain through this arch is what one will see today when traveling down Fifth Avenue from Midtown to Lower Manhattan. Someone like David Rockefeller, who has a home in Midtown Manhattan. David has been making the trip south to Lower Manhattan since at least the 1950s. Ever since he had his office built three blocks from where he would then have the World Trade Center built. The residents who opposed the moving of the fountain altogether are still angry about the destruction of the character of the historic park, the cutting down of dozens of mature trees, and the lack of funds left over for normal maintenance. They've also noted that the fountain is still not aligned with the arch in Fifth Avenue, which was the excuse given for moving it all along. Here's what the new fountain is in line with. As for the Washington Square Arch itself, it was supposedly erected to commemorate the 100th anniversary of Washington's inauguration. Designed by Stanford White and built in the 1890s, White also designed the nearby Judson Memorial Church, which was financed by David Rockefeller's grandfather, John D. Rockefeller. The arch is said to have been built to frame the view of the church, but it only does that from the side. What the arch did frame perfectly was the Twin Towers of the World Trade Center. How interesting that John D. Rockefeller's grandson, David, would see to it that the towers were built in the perfect spot to be framed by that arch in the late 1960s. The two of you, when you were a leader at Chase Manhattan mm. and he was governor, uh, were responsible for, really, the World Trade Center? We worked together on that. He has left his imprint on urban redevelopment projects from lower Manhattan to San Francisco's Embarcadero, Lower Manhattan, to San Francisco's Embarcadero, Lower Manhattan.
The cornerstone of this arch was laid in 1890 in accordance with the ancient rites of masonry and in full Masonic ritual. Presiding at the dedication ceremony for the arch were ten officers of the Grand Lodge of Masons. You know, the Masons, one of those repugnant secret societies Kennedy warned us about. The very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society. And we are, as a people, inherently and historically opposed to secret societies, to secret oaths, and to secret proceedings. In 2000, the New York City Parks Department embarked on an extensive restoration of the arch. They unveiled and rededicated the arch on August 16, 2001, just 26 days before it would frame the most horrific mass murder in the history of the United States. The arch has two inscriptions on it. One is a George Washington quote that ends in the words, The event is in the hand of God. Washington was talking about the creation of the Constitution when he supposedly said this. There are also two 16-foot-tall statues of Washington on the arch. Behind the statue on the west side of the arch, a figure called Justice is holding a book directly over the statue of George Washington's head. The book says in Latin, Exitus Acta Probat, which translated means, the outcome justifies the deed, or in other words, the end justifies the means. What event and what deed could the Masons who erected this arch have been referring to? Here's the Washington statue on the east side of the arch, complete with something that looks like a chain leading up under Washington's cape. The view of the towers through the arch was a favorite for photographers, painters, and filmmakers. Here's a scene from When Harry Met Sally, showing the arch and the towers. Note how they're sure to show us this University of Chicago window sticker. The University of Chicago was founded by John D. Rockefeller, and it's where David Rockefeller received his Ph.D. To recap, the $5 bill shows the towers being built, complete with the cranes used to build them. The $10 bill shows the North Tower burning and the iconic first plane hole. The $20 bill shows the South Tower now also burning and human head-shaped objects stacked up like the doomed innocent men and women in the windows on 9-11. The 50s show the towers exploding into dust and the empty sky afterward. And the $100 bill shows the water plume of the new, arbitrarily moved for no apparent good reason and at tremendous expense, fountain in Washington Square Park. All framed by the Washington Square Arch, with its cryptic inscriptions, Masonic roots, and statue of our first president and father of our country with what looks like a chain on his leg. Could this arch have been built to frame a liberty-destroying false flag like 9-11? Since it was erected in the late 1800s, this might seem like a ridiculously long time to wait for the event that justifies the deed, but maybe the event was supposed to happen much earlier. In fact, in the early 1900s, some unidentified, extremely affluent financier approached famous Spanish architect Antony Gaudi to design a hotel to be built in Lower Manhattan. Gaudi's Gothic-inspired creation would have had at least one 1,100-foot-tall 1, tower. For unknown reasons, the plans fell through. Gowdy, a religious man, abandoned all of his secular work and cloistered himself inside the workshop of La Sagrada Familia. Turns out, Gowdy's Gothic Hotel would have been built on the exact spot where the Twin Towers, with their Gothic-inspired exteriors, would be built in the late 1960s thanks to good old David. Could the mysterious, extremely affluent financier have been John D. Rockefeller? Could the plan have been put on hold because the richest man in history had also become the most hated man in America? Ida Tarbell's book and character study exposing his evil turned public and political opinion against him. The 1914 Ludlow Massacre didn't help the Rockefeller name either. John D. Rockefeller spent much of the last 30 years of his life in hiding. On page 4 of his 2002 autobiography entitled Memoirs, David writes of how pleased he is that people close to his grandfather say that he is the grandchild most like him, and that he was very much his grandfather's favorite. What's with the Rockefeller family's apparent desire to make sure that a Gothic building went up on that spot in Lower Manhattan? Well, short of a confession, we can only speculate, but the Goths were basically a Germanic people who, in the 3rd to the 6th century, basically went around ravaging, pillaging, and plundering much of Europe. When they conquered Rome, they destroyed the ancient buildings and built new Gothic structures. The 2006 New York Sun article entitled American Gothic is about John D. Rockefeller's love of Gothic architecture. 
Rockefeller financed the Gothic Riverside Church and the Gothic Central Presbyterian Church, both in New York. And there are many Gothic buildings on the campus of his University of Chicago, including the Rockefeller Memorial Chapel. The Rockefellers are of Germanic lineage. They came to America from Germany in the early 1700s. Are they descendants of the Goths or Visigoths? Do they feel that they're completing the work of their ancestors? Is their goal to destroy the American Empire just as the Goths destroyed the Roman Empire? On page 55 of Divided We Stand, a biography of the WTC published in 1999, the author seems to make that connection. He's writing about the decision to build the towers and he actually compares it to the Visigothic armies closing in on Rome. Here's page 405 of David's book Memoirs again. Here he admits that he's proud to be part of a secret cabal working against the best interests of the U.S. The horrors of 9-11-2001 happened inside two 1,300-foot death traps that David is responsible for building. Has there ever been an event that worked more against the best interests of the U.S. than 9-11? I actually was there and saw the building collapse. This family made their fortune here, then set to work using that money and the power that it brings against the rest of us. They covertly control everything that matters. Education, medicine, our politicians, our military and economic systems, and our media. In the words of John D. Rockefeller himself, competition is a sin. They already have all the money they could ever want. Now they want complete control of the rest of us. False flags like 9-11 and their mass shootings are designed to make us give up all of our rights and take away our means of defending ourselves. Every incident is a step toward their plans for world government, with themselves and their cronies running things. Unfortunately, the story of the pictures on the money doesn't end here either. A new hundred dollar bill is due to be released on October 8th of 2013, and they've made major changes to the picture of Independence Hall. Remember, this is the building that underwent the smallest amount of change on the 1996 series. Now the building is being shown from the completely opposite side, the north instead of the south. The spill hasn't been released yet, but an image editing program can tell us what it's going to look like folded. The well-defined arch is gone, and we see an object that resembles a torch, with a puff of fire or smoke emanating from the top. NYU, where the Washington Square Arch resides, has a torch as its symbol, but this torch actually bears a much stronger resemblance to the Marathon Torch built for the 1928 Olympic Games and located in Amsterdam. It held the first Olympic flame ever lit during the Olympic Games. If this is the Marathon Torch in Amsterdam, it's also important to note that the recent Boston false flag happened right in front of a store called Marathon Place and New York was called New Amsterdam in the 17th century. Are they giving us a clue about the next false flag? This guy knows, but he's not talking. He's the main person behind the events of 9-11 and the only person on the planet whose name is all over those buildings and who could have put those images on the money, yet he still walks the streets of New York like a damn celebrity and is bowed down to and honored by those who propose to rule us. Let's put a stop to his reign of terror on behalf of the almost 3,000 people he killed on 9-11 and on behalf of the billions of others that have perished due to him and his family. This is the only way, in the words of John F. Kennedy himself, Man will be what he was born to be, free and independent. 